Hey, hey, how you doing? Did you know there's other ways to clean your hair? In the mass-produced marketing campaign branding hypnosis we're in, it sometimes almost feels like we have to unlearn and relearn. Not saying that organic store-bought shampoos aren't good, but in order to be an informed consumer, you have to be knowledgeable about your options. One thing to unlearn is that in order to clean your hair, the product has to produce tons of lather and foam. Clay is a really good example of this. Clays like bentonite and rasul can clean your hair really well, even if it's super dirty, and it does not produce any lather or foam. Here's a link to some interesting videos on how clay works to clean your hair. There are all sorts of herbs, plants, and fruits that can clean your hair and scalp. Shikai Kai is just one example. Shikai Kai or Soap Pod or Kochi or Shika or Shike or Sige, just to name a few, has been used to clean and treat hair for thousands of years. Its scientific name is Acacia concina. It's a short, bushy, fern-like tree with tiny, tiny leaves and sharp thorns. Its hair cleansing abilities are in all parts of the tree. But rather than chopping down a whole tree, it's usually the fruit that's used. It's not the typical soft and sweet type we're used to eating. The shikai kai fruit is more like a lagoon. So how does this clean your hair? It's all because of a chemical called saponin. Shikai Kai cleans your hair in two ways. There are different types and different strengths of saponin, but overall, a saponin molecule has a polar or water-loving side and a non-polar or oil-loving side. The oil-loving side creates a bond with the oily buildup in your hair and the water-loving side creates a bond with the water you use to wash it out. Fun fact! Did you know saponin is considered a toxin? No worries though, only in large concentrated amounts. In fact, low amounts of saponin occurs naturally in all sorts of vegetables, legumes, and herbs. So the saponin in shikai kai is only toxic to smaller creatures like bacteria, fungus, and yeast. Plants that contain saponin, like shikai kai, use it to protect themselves against infection. When you apply shikai kai on your hair and scalp, it also cleans by acting as an antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-yeast. So it's great for your scalp, but especially if you have dandruff issues. Oh, shikai kai also has an interesting combination of acids, minerals, and vitamins. This unique combination gives it even more great benefits. As expected, there are different ways to use shikai kai to clean your hair. So in order to give you as much information as possible, I'm gonna do a little experiment where I'll use shikai kai tea on one half of my head and shikai kai paste on the other side. Shikai kai should be used as a shampoo. So for both methods, I'm just gonna mix it with plain old distilled water. So I know I'm only observing how well shikai kai cleans my hair and how it makes it feel. Let's make the paste first. The measurements are not strict at all. It's really up to you. I'm using about four tablespoons of shikai kai powder. Add hot water little by little until you get the consistency you like. My hair is really dense and these powders can be difficult to rinse out. So I like for my paste to be a little more liquidy. Keep it covered until you're ready to use it so it doesn't dry out. For the tea, I mix in about three tablespoons of shikai kai powder with about two cups of hot water. Make sure to mix it around and break up the chunks. Let it sit for a few minutes. Filter out the powder and add it to an application bottle so it's easier to use. Like always, it's best to first apply it on your scalp and take some time to massage it in before coating your shaft and your ends. To avoid tangles, I put my hair into twists and let it sit for a few minutes with a shower cap 
before I rinse it out. On both sides, my hair and scalp definitely felt clean, so there's no denying that Shikai Kai works. When I was rinsing out the paste and tea, I noticed it was a lot easier for me to separate tangles, and my hair strands felt nice and strong, like they could withstand more. But at least for those with textured natural hair, you definitely have to follow this up with a conditioner. I personally prefer the tea over the paste, mainly because the paste is a headache to rinse out. The tea is just as effective and a lot easier to deal with. It doesn't create a mess and you can use it in the shower just like you would a regular shampoo. Last week, I posted a video about Amla. If you haven't seen it already, here's a link. You can use both Amla and Shikai Kai, but for me, I'd rather use them separately. So Shikai Kai as the shampoo step and Amla as the conditioner step. But it's not written in stone, so feel free to explore. You can also add all types of other ingredients, like oils, essential oils, and herbs to your Shikai Kai mixture. There are tons of different recipes you can find online. I'm curious, let me know below what your complete hair type is. Here's mine. And if you've used Shikai Kai before, share your recipe below and how it makes your hair feel afterwards. I hope you learned something new. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.